Okay, let's go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order. <coughs> so I wanted to um, I wanted to welcome welcome the guest here today. This is the uh, Community Development Block Grant Committee. Um, we have with us tonight or today uh, Doug Ellis and uh, uh, Craig Wilson. Craig's our consultant, and um, Doug is the uh, I don't know how you would officially designate your role. You're the coordinator or I'm the state guy. State, yes, yeah, state, state guy. guy. Um, so, yeah. So we've had a lot of we've had a lot of misstarts on the on the facade program in particular. Um, tonight, uh, Craig's going to go through and discuss what we believe to be a viable option, um, and I believe the state has, I guess, tentatively approved materials only option. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Craig and let him. And so he's going to highlight the one pager. Everyone should have a one pager with them. Did everybody get one? Here, yeah, you can come. Here, this one. Yeah. So everybody's got one now. Okay. Fine. Um, and this is really uh, going to be, in a sense, twofold. Some of you are already in the queue, having been a part of the bidding process that has been done up to this point. Some, I assume, are some new applicants that had come in just in the last couple of months. Um, so this apply, this is going to apply to both if, if a building owner wants it to apply to their building. Uh, we had always had in the facade design, facade program design, uh, the option, oh, <laughs> there you go. I get a podium. Uh, a, a materials only option. Um, which was always intended to be a fallback option because one of the issues is if you only get materials for your building, you're not going to necessarily get uh, as much money as you might get otherwise with the facade program because we could also pay for labor. Well, we figured out the labor is killing us in terms of the bids that have come in. Um, and the more we have reviewed those bids, uh, the more we realize how much they've been out of line. And many of you just from your own looking at them... Um, and even meeting with Jeremy previously to try to negotiate those that were in the first round, to try to negotiate, negotiate out some items. The items that were still left didn't look reasonable because of you know, the labor costs that were coming in associated with it. And that's, that's just the economy we're in, unfortunately, at this point. Bids on many public projects, most public projects are all coming in um, much, much higher than they have in the past. Um, so, you know, these kind of conversations are being held in a lot of places on a lot of different projects. Um, but in order to kind of get things rolling again, uh, we've decided that, that we want to make potentially the materials only as the go-to option, the first option. Um, and in that way, we can at least get something done. Um, now, DACD, and, the, and that's why uh, Matt had turned to Doug and said, did we get, our, did we get the state's blessing? You know, we, we've been running this by the state because... It does require us to define materials only a little more broadly than it might seem on the surface. And that's why we wanted to meet with you tonight and create this one pager, actually. Um, because when you think of materials only, you might think of a, a piece of wood um, or a, you know, a doorknob or whatever. That's materials. But we can, um, we can also kind of stretch that a little bit and call things that are materials only um, and Joe Petty is not here tonight, but is one of the terms he came, one of our committee members came up with. He said, "Plug and play." You know, if you're going to buy a window from a window provider, and that window provider is going to install it, they typically give you the installed price. They typically don't say the window is this much and my labor is this much. They just say it's 500 per window, it's 1,000 per window. You know, go to Window World, we have the advertisements every day on the television. Um, we can, in instances like that, call those materials only, okay? Um, but it does then wind up being a little bit, a couple of careful things, and that's why the one pager is here, to make sure we mind our P's and Q's on that and still not um, wind up violating any federal requirements. Because basically the federal requirements are that we have to do labor compliance, paperwork on labor, and the contractor has to pay a certain wage rate as required by the federal law. Um, this kind of gives us a little wiggle room around that because obviously there is labor involved installing a window, but again, windows, doors, they're typically not priced with labor and you know, materials, they're just typically priced 500 per window. Um, so it's a way to kind of work around it. 
So, under procedures, and I'm just going to go through this real carefully, and please ask questions if you have any, because it does get a little detail in a couple of places. <coughs> so there are a list of items that can be covered as materials only. Um, paint is one of those things. I mean, we can pay for the paint. Um, we can pay for the materials related to it, you know, the, if there's a certain uh, uh, priming of the, the paint, that, the, the surface before the paint goes on, we pay for the primer. Those kind of things. So anything related to paint, we can pay for the materials called paint. Um, we can pay for construction materials. That would be permanent improvements. You know, we can't you know buy shelving and things like that, but it has to be permanent improvements to the facade. Now, if you want to use your own contractor, or if you are a contractor, and we had one uh, building owner that we had some conversations with who is a contractor who wanted to do his own and do materials only. Uh, we're going to just follow right on through with that. We hadn't, um, hadn't pulled the trigger on that one yet, but we will. Um, you can get the materials paid for you know, that your contractor would use. Um, you know, and there, there are some examples in that 1B of what those materials are. Um, there is an exception in 1B, but just kind of hang on to that and we'll talk about it under C. <laughs> C. 1C says... We can cover the installation of doors, standard windows, <coughs> storefront windows, exterior wall coverings, awnings, and signs as long as the cost is quoted and paid based on an installed price by the vendor providing the new items. Um, and that's where that <coughs> exception is under item B. Um, we can buy a window that your contractor may put in for you. Um, we can't pay for the labor for your contractor to put that window in. We're right back to the issue of labor compliance and all that kind of stuff. But if you do go to somebody, to a company that does windows, and they give you that quoted price, 500 a window, we can pay for the windows. It has to be the same person then who is selling you the window who is also installing the window. I say that, you know, a lot of you subcontractors just kind of want to send their work, but it's the same vendor. The same vendor. Is the person you're buying the window from, and, and that same vendor is also then installing the window. And that's kind of our, our workaround. But then again, if you have a contractor you're working with and your design calls for a window replacement, uh, we still can buy the window, but you have to pay for the contractor's window yourself. See that fine distinction there? Uh, and that is, that is one of those places where this does get a little bit detailed. Those things under item two that are not considered materials only. And then A kind of repeats that. If, we can, we, if you, you buy the window separate, have somebody else put it in, we can't pay for that person's labor. Um, same thing for doors, windows, signs, awnings. Um, any kind of uh, work, and, and there were a number of the designs in the first round that basically required the fabrication of um, um, particularly wood trim items or composite material trim items, the fabrication of those items and then the installation on those items, and to use Joe's term again, those things that are not plug and play, <laughs> those things where you know somebody, a laborer is there and is going to be there for three days, you know, taking something down and sawing things to fit and putting them back up, uh, we, we can't do that as materials only because again, that gets into a, a <clears throat> extensive labor and we're kind of tripping over uh, the federal law. Uh, we can pay for the materials that might be used for that, okay, because we can buy the lumber, we can buy that composite material, but we can't pay for the labor that goes with that whatsoever. Um, there would still be a design write-up requirement. Uh, all those are in the first round. That design write-up has long since been done and been used to, you know, to try to get bids. Um, I took a, when we first started this conversation, I just took all of those and sort of highlighted everywhere it said paint, awning, <laughs> window. And a fair number of the designs from the previous round do have items we could do as materials only. Um, so those of you who are in that first round, we need to, and, and, and uh, I'm going to be available tomorrow and hang out at, and Chris is into the building. For anybody who wants to come by in the morning and talk in more detail about this. Um, but if you are in that first round and you've already got that design and you look at it and it talks about a window and an awning and a door and that kind of stuff, right? let's, let's talk about that because I think that's where we can do the materials only for you. And again, if the installation is done by the vendor, <laughs> the window, materials only, um, and we can do that. But for those who would be a second round, and we've got about a half a dozen applications recently, 
uh, we will have to do a work write-up of some sort to go with it, even if it's just putting up an awning as materials only, because it does require approval by the Board of Architectural Review for the town and by the Department of Historic Resources at, at the state level. Obviously, a work write-up for installing an awning is not a very difficult work write-up. <laughs> you know, it'll be a, a photograph saying the awning goes here and it's this dimension. Um, but, so we, we will do those and kind of knock them out and send them out line and make sure they get approved and, and work on that with you as well. Um, item four on here, uh, what, if, you, if the work was done the traditional way, it would be a three-party contract with the contractor, the town, and the property owner. These would be done as two-party contracts between the building owner and the town. So that third party basically drops out of the equation. And that's one of the things that helps us uh, deal with the federal law issue. There is no you know, typical, traditional contractor involved in the process at that point. Um, that does, um, and I don't really highlight it here, but the program design, and most of you I hope have seen that before, uh, that still does come with a requirement um, that there be a deed of trust placed on the building for five years, it's reducing 20% per year for any cost of materials that is provided through the grant program. That requirement has not changed. That has not gone away. Um, when you might come uh, to do a two-party contract, you need to bring to a, bring with you to us a list, hopefully do it in advance, um, a list of those materials that you're looking for us to cover. We've written this extra little section here to say we can pay you on the front end up to 50% of that cost We'll finish paying you the remaining 50% once everything's done and you've got actual receipts that we can put in the file. Because we've got to have those receipts in the file. That's, that's pretty important. Uh, but more than likely, let's say you're going to go to a window vendor. He's going to give you a cost estimate. Okay, The windows are going to meet the design requirements that have already been provided. Uh, you bring that cost estimate to us for $4,000. <coughs> Up front, we would pay two. We'd pay you the other two when it's done. You know, you've got a receipt saying the work is done by the person uh, that installed the windows for you. Um, all the contractor work needs to be done within 90 days of closing. Um, we don't want these to drag out. We can't. We need the grant to keep moving. Um, but that's also just to make sure that we, you know, as we write a check for two thousand dollars, as an example, I just said, we, I mean, the town's going to want to see something happen. <coughs> so, you know, you and if you've already got a quote from a window vendor, let's say. Uh, more than likely, they're antsy and ready to go, too. You know, they might be 45 days out because they got to order the windows, that kind of thing. Uh, but they're going to want to get moving, too, so they can get paid. Um, <coughs> number six is about the 50%. Number seven is about to be the trust note that is still um, going to be put on the, on the building. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to do. And again, we'll be available, Chris and I, tomorrow morning. For any from that first round, if you want to come, you know, let's pick the items that you've already got in your design, and anybody that's potentially in this new round wants to come talk about items, because I will probably, more than anything, uh, wind up doing the work write-ups for the second batch, just because they're going to be pretty simple. They don't need to be fancy. Um, and I will grab a photograph or two tomorrow, if we need to, of your building. You know, if it's going to be an awning, it's going to be windows, that kind of thing. Um, just a, and a small reminder, especially for this, the second batch, um, Department of Historic Resources will still have to review these, so things like wooden windows have to be replaced with wooden windows. If you got a bunch of old replacement windows that were put in 20 years ago, they're not historic, and you pretty much can put just about anything you can back, um, in as long as the, architectural, the Board of Architectural Review here says it's okay, because they're going to want it to look like it's a window that fits in downtown, and you, you probably would too. Um, but if it's already been replaced, we got we have a lot more latitude than an original wooden window, and that's just an example of some of the things we have to deal with um, with Department of Historic Resources. Um, so, what questions do you have or um, input? Have question <laughs> yeah. For the match, um, it's up to twenty thousand dollars. Right. And uh, what's the time frame, and how do they have to demonstrate the match? Yeah, what we prefer that you do, um, and I'm going to check in, in, in the files tomorrow with Chris for what's been provided for round one, folks, in terms of match. You know, it is a dollar for dollar match, and you do need to provide us the receipts from the work that you've done previously to, to go in the files to show us that you have the match. We do the same <coughs> deadline to apply, even though we've slipped down several years. The same original deadline. The same original date. Prior expenditure applies. Yes, the same original date applies. Yeah. 
what was that date? Uh, September 1, 2015, I think it was. It goes way back now because it's been so long since we've been working on this project. <coughs> so you got a, pretty, you got a pretty wide window at that point of things that have been done that you can count as your match. July 1, 2015. Okay, July 1, the application. There you go. Yeah. So yes. explain that deed of trust. Uh, it's a standard deed of trust. It says uh, basically, you know, whatever that amount is, um, it's, it, it clearly indicates um, in the deed of trust <coughs> note in particular that 20% of that goes away, that obligation goes away per year, and after five years <coughs> there is a zero balance on it. <coughs> One of the reasons that that is done, it, it really, um, it, I know nobody likes to put any more debt on their building than they have to, but one of the things that does accomplish, actually, is any grant funds we give you where there's a deed of trust that has a requirement that you maintain the building, and that's written in, in the contract into the deed of trust, uh, and that you leave the improvements in place for those five-year period, um, anything that's got a requirement in it is not considered a grant to you because you've got an obligation attached to that money. So it's not taxable. Otherwise, if we just gave you $20,000 in improvements, and there wasn't an obligation attached to it, you would have to report it as taxable income. So there's a kind of a little extra that comes out of that by allowing that deed of trust to be attached for those five years. So, so Craig, if I could just, um, so the difference is uh, in a block grant, the key word is grant, and a grant typically means you're granting funds. So in this, in this perspective, it's really a loan. Um, the federal money is coming through the state to the town. But as an individual, individual private business owners, you're not a recipient of a grant. It's called a loan. It's really a five-year forgivable, forgivable loan. loan. That's, so that's what we can't call grant. it it's semantics. We can't call it a grant. But it's a forgivable. So it's a grant to the town, a loan never. from the town to the individual oh, the landowner. Loan. Correct. It's a forgivable loan. And, and the question is, is that transferable to yes. a new it owner? Yes, it is transferable right. to a new okay. owner if they wish to. So yeah. you you would be a subordinate yeah. lien in that case. You would resubordinate this in the second position of any potential buyer. That's correct. Could I? I don't want to. <laughs> it's not for me to question that, but I am saying. We understood previously that if you sold the property, it would be repayable. There it could no be repayable. There was it, no it, mention of it being transferable. It could be either one, whichever way, you, whichever way works for you in terms okay. of that transaction you have with the new owner. And it, <coughs> and it could work one way or the other. That's up to you to decide and you're transferring the property. But well, I mean, there's nothing in the verbiage that prevents it being transferable. The, the program design specifically says it can be transferable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so it can be transferable. Um, it's a five-year... 20% of year goes away. Okay. Now there is, you know, I mentioned there's an obligation. There's actually three obligations. One is you keep your building maintained, you leave the facade improvements that we pay for there. The third one is you rent the building, basically. Get it, get it back into use, because that's really the goal of this whole program. Um, there is a provision where if you actually just sit on the building and don't try to rent it, that five years can keep getting extended. There is a provision, though, if you've got short gaps in rental, that's just doing business. I mean, if you lose a business, it might take six months to fill your building again. So, so and we just don't worry about those. We're approved on round ones. Mm -hmm. um, so, is this transferable in the sense uh, the building is approved, correct? Not us, the owner. So, is it transferable in the sense that a new potential owner could take advantage of this? Or is that, I mean, is that just a transfer of... Uh, Okay. It's an obligation transfer. So you're you're look at it like this: you're getting, <coughs> for all intents and purposes, um, you're getting a fifty percent loan for free, right? Mm -hmm. Up to twenty thousand dollars. Now, as taxpayer dollars, it goes through the state to town. You do a two-party contract. Your part, your obligation, is to maintain the property. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, you're in a historic area. The whole intent of the of the block grant is for economic development to stimulate, revitalize, revitalize, promote job creation, all that stuff. Your part is you, you put up 50%, you get match 50%, but your obligation is to maintain the, the um, property in its um, approved uh, condition. So if I sell my property prior to... You can do whatever you want. Prior to using any of this money. Yeah, he's asking is a this question. That yes. I can <laughs> the new owner... <laughs> The new owner would then have to meet the match requirement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Your, your improvements can't count towards that new owner's yeah. match they have to qualify on their own. Yeah. They'd have to qualify on their own. Yeah. 
And the date that you mentioned, it's renovations done since that date. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. and, and one of the things, though, we can only work on the exterior of the building as a part of this program. It, the, your improvements could be anything that is a permanent improvement to the building, interior or exterior. Again, we can't, we can't give you credit for furnishings. Um, we have in the past because of uh, the nature of a restaurant, you know, in a sense, those ovens and hoods and all that stuff could get moved and be gone, but not easily. <laughs> so we we've we've tend to give, go ahead and give credit for those kind of things because that's expensive, big stuff that's semi-attached, especially hoods and vents and things like that. Uh, but items that wouldn't be counted, you know, if you've got tables and chairs and shelves, no, that's not a permanent attachment. You could move it out tomorrow. Um, so we, we want it to be something that's really affixed in some way or another. So we were in the prior, in phase one, um, the bids that were received, would they all ready have in your property, in your possession, the actual material amounts involved? So we don't need to review those? No, they do. They, they do not. Yeah, typically when you do a bid, and that's again part of the issue with this, when you do a bid process like that, the bidder basically gives you um, either the overall price, bang, or a price per item. And they do not split those things out in the process. So in, our, in our case, it was a, a new roof, okay? Um, so, or one of them was. So we can go out and get our own quote to make sure it includes materials and then come back to you with that, is, even though we were in phase one and, and it was where already... where are you guys at on getting your list to get our vendors together? Um, we have a few uh, vendors for the windows and doors. Um, the, uh, we're waiting on some res more responses from the audience. Yeah, uh, through BJ's office, they're actually contacting some vendors just to find out who's really interested in being a, a part of this. So they're working on a list of folks in addition to the folks you probably already know for that matter uh, that might make it a little easier because they, they have been contacted you know, uh, through his office and know that this is coming. So we're working a list up for that as well. The max available on a corner building is what? 20,000. So the max is 20. Yeah. So if you only have a front street front, it's 15. Well, it's basically written as the basic loan. I'm going to use the right term. <laughs> 15,000. You've got a building that actually has two business bays, okay, two separate businesses. You're already up to 20, or a side, you're up to 20. So, so a lot of buildings get up to that 20 pretty quick. It's you could do with a rear-facing street, too. Right? As long as it's yeah. viewable from a yeah. public right away, and I think just about every building downtown is, yeah, and people park in back, so yes, yeah. So the rear does count. Now, if you start dealing with a, a, a non-primary facade, it's based on the idea that your front facade is in good shape. Because we don't want you to spend money over here if this doesn't look good. But I don't, I don't think anybody would be wanting to do that anyway. But it's, it's in there just to protect us. A little bit. So we understood that part of the problem originally had been that there were contractors that wanted to do the work but didn't want to fill out the paperwork. The, yeah, the, well, a lot of them don't like this federal paperwork stuff, yes. Yeah. Is, is there any way to facilitate helping them get the paperwork filled out? We, 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 as a firm, have always made ourselves available to contractors to help them get through that paperwork. Well, let me clarify. The paperwork requirement on contractors for materials only is... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking about the original... She's going back to the original The original, original, band, original kind of stuff, yeah. program. Yeah. Um, and, and when we had the bidders, the uh, potential bidders come in in a, a pre-bid conference, I was there as a part of that and walked them, for those that weren't familiar with it, walked them through what that would require and kind of gave them an, you know, an idea of what it required and made sure they knew we were available to help them do that paperwork if they needed us to do it. Because we're the ones who monitor it on behalf of the town. When that paperwork comes in, we're, always, we're the ones who check it. Um, so we did make that offer, but evidently it didn't make enough difference. <laughs> so well, I think you're glossing over, though, a little bit um, that a contractor who did it you know, the conventional way, the way we first approached it, would have to pay the Davis-Bacon wage rate. Davis, that's, that's the bigger that's issue. that's the thing that's driving, that's one of the things that's driving the cost up, is mm -hmm. Davis-Bacon is triple or more what it would be for yeah. what it would So normally. Yeah, so it was a matter of paperwork, but it was a matter that it would cost more, just because of having to pay a higher wage to those doing the work. So are we just cutting all that out and now just going to a materials-only cost? That's part of what we're trying to do here, yes ma'am. <laughs> 
What is the timing on phase two? Because the phase two people were never alerted that this process was even beginning for them. Well, and then you weren't because we wind up in this jam trying to figure all this out. Yeah. We're going to try to get the phase two up and running pretty quick, too. What does that mean? That means if you're in phase two, come by and talk to um, to Chris and I tomorrow about what you're interested in doing in the morning. We'll be at, I'll be at, hanging out on his end of the building downstairs um, and go over and take some photographs, take a few notes, and kind of get rolling with you. Now, again, that's going to have to go to the Board of Architecture Review and Department of Historic Resources, but we'll, we'll push it on through as can fast as we can. it change? Um, based on this new information, can it change um, from what we originally put in our application? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, your original application where you might have put in there some improvements yeah. is really to kind of give us an idea, but you're, you're not wedded to that and either are we. So, yeah, especially now in light of new information. Yeah. Yeah. Do we still have this deadline in September, or is that the deadline to get the materials purchased, but then we've got 90 days after that? Well, two so part, two, a two part answer to that. Yes and yes. <laughs> yeah, one of the nice things about materials only is that, you know, you, if you're, we're not paying for the labor, you could be installing stuff afterwards. Now, when he comes to look at the files 60 days after the project closes, he's going to see that the work was done. But if you've still got somebody out there putting up something that we bought material wise on that date, we're fine. But we probably will be asking for a six month extension as well, just because because of where we are in the process. So we will have a little extra time. Oh, well. that will take us into the middle of the winter. Yeah, yeah, and the thing slow down weeks. then anyway, but yeah. But hopefully what it does open up for us is that, you know, the construction season, which this year is probably starting right now, given the weather we've been having, you know, we can take advantage of the spring, summer, and fall by having an extension, so. And so are we doing the same thing with the improvements at the gazebo area? Um, different subject. Um, that came in way over price too. I don't know if you've got yeah. that word. <laughs> so, you know, the town's right now trying to sort that one out too. So, way, way over what we thought it was going to be. So, you're, so, was your BJ? Yes. So you're looking for vendors who can provide awnings and windows. We could use them as a resource or we can use whoever we find. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. For materials only. That's correct. We're just going to have some that, are, you know, uh, that would be available. Great, thank you. <coughs> what is the process for the historic review? Um, well, because we're doing this materials only, I'd say I'm probably going to wind up doing that little photograph with some call outs. Kind of <coughs> say hi. One of my staff members will <laughs> um, do it uh, and a description um, of the work. Uh, we need to, at, at that point, color doesn't necessarily matter, but we'll want to talk color a little bit. We'll, you know, we'll kind of have some things in there. Um, then it goes to, it actually it has, in your case it has three approvals. The Board of Architectural Review has review on anything in the historic district. That's a given, even if we weren't using grant funds. Um, the um, uh, Preservation Virginia is a historic group in Virginia uh, that also expressed interest in reviewing projects. And so they actually got into the what's called the um, programmatic agreement with the Department of Historic Resources. So they get to look at it. Last time we did this, I had to drag something out on them because they were mainly only interested in the afternoon. In. They weren't interested in your facade. Do they uh, have powers? Huh? Do they have powers or just on, on an advisory? Advisory only. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then DHR, Department of Historic Resources, um, which has 30 days to review the projects that we submit to them. And we typically submit them, and they go in electronically. They go in digital form in the system that they have. Um, and then they have 30 days to review them and reply. And if they, if they see any, basically with the installations we're now talking about doing, and, and the materials only, there's going to probably not be much for them to object to. Uh, awnings is a great example. You know, you can put an awning up. It's going to be there 10 years. It wears out. You take it down. The building still stands just like it did prior. So uh, they don't see things like that as permanently changing the looks of the building, per se. And Greg, uh, if it's a like-for-like like item, if you're replacing wood windows with wood windows, uh, it wouldn't have to go through the Board of Arch Architectural Review. Oh, it okay. can be administratively approved because you're doing the same thing, you're just <coughs> updating it. Uh, metal helps. roof for metal roof, uh, and if your vinyl windows were installed 20 years ago and you're replacing vinyl windows again, it's just an administrative approval. Yeah, thank you, that helps a lot. Now, I will, I will add on to that, <coughs> the HR in that first round got real particular about repairing wooden windows versus replacing yes. wooden windows. Um, 
So we, we, we have to kind of keep that in mind because they want to know that the, if it is one of the original wood windows that's still there, they want to know that it can't be repaired before you go replacing it, and they would prefer that it be repaired. Um, that gets expensive, and that is labor, which we are saying with materials only, we wouldn't be paying for. So it goes back to a cost item that could be very, very high. So. You want to run through an example time frame, including the respective reviews, the 30-day response for the new SAR, just around April 1st. What would be a typical time frame for them to submit a design with the cost estimates, and, you know, with all the responses before they can um, go under contract, start construction, etc.? If if you if you're wanting to be in that phase two and come by tomorrow when we get those pictures, we talk about what you're interested in. Um, I'll endeavor to make sure the design is done in the next couple of weeks and for your review. Because you owners always get the final say. Yes, I like it. No, I don't. You know. Move forward, let's don't move forward. Um, and once we get that say, it, it is approved here locally, and then we'd send it right on. So there's no reason that we couldn't have something ready to roll um, mid to late June at that point, even with the approval process that didn't have to take place. And, and, and in, in the event that Fraser has to be involved, has there been a discussion with them? There has been one discussion with them I had early on. I was waiting to see how things shook out before I talked to them again. <laughs> um, so I will be doing that here shortly, because it looks like it is shaking out finally. So if, if um, I guess when we first started this project, the architects had given us some kind of renderings and talked about the key things that they, right? right. So if you want to use those, we don't have to get approval to go. The one, if you're in round one, anything yeah. that's on that page has already been approved all, okay, all the way up and down the left. Good deal. Yeah. yeah, if you're in round one, anything on that page is fine. And that means it's it been approved by the Board of Architectural Review as well. So, yeah. And DHR. I just, just want to get it straight in my own head. <clears throat> if, if we have done improvement on the property, $5,000 worth of something, and, and there's a dollar-per-dollar a dollar match, but it's materials only, <clears throat> and I give you a receipt for the $5,000, you're going to give me... Five thousand dollars worth of materials. Yes. Yeah. And a deed of trust. Yes. Okay. And the math on that can be very <coughs> one building to the next. So if you've got a math problem, we'll solve it <laughs> for sure. Because sometimes somebody might not have many improvements that they've paid for, and if you, anything you pay for is a part of a so, forgivable loan, i.e., five thousand. <coughs> If you've put up 2,500, we can give you 2,500, even if you've done zero to your building up to that point. So, it, it, and the math could be somewhere in between 75, 25, 66, 33 percent, that kind of thing. So. But on that example, you're getting 50 percent up front and 50 percent upon completion. And when we have the final, you know, receipts to put in the final. Oh, so you'd have to be prepared. And if you don't need the 50% up front, it makes it easier. Fewer checks for BJ to keep up with. But we're wanting to, you know, in good faith, wanting to make the offer. If, if, if you need that help up front, yes, 50% up front, 50% at the end, and you get your, you know, your receipts. And, well, in and, and the case of, um, let's use a roof as an example. If we buy the roof materials, you're going to want to guarantee from that roofer that's good for a solid year. You know, bring that in with your receipt of payment to them. That's the kind of stuff we want to have in the files. Uh, for our protection and for yours, for that matter, you're going to want your <laughs> So just one other fine point. It's a great question. So um, it's not it's not all the money. Go go have a good time. There is a 50%, like Craig said, for materials. And the final 50% would be remitted upon completion. It's just a, a way to secure the public investment. And generally, the consultant's agent would confirm that all the contracted or promised improvements have been made as <coughs> approved by the facade advisory board. Yeah. In that case, probably Chris and I would come look at your building with you and look at your receipts and look at your file, make sure you did get that guarantee because you, you want to have that in writing in your files and before the payment's made. But mm -hmm. done. Well, and one of the things that, that is in here, and I didn't reference this actually, what we've decided, the easiest way to do this is the contract is done on the front end 
but the deed of trust is only done on the back end because that number might change per chance, okay, while you're working. You might find out, let's say we're doing 5,000 worth of materials and something else comes up and there's an additional $1,000 worth of materials that are required, we can then make that adjustment on the back end and cover those additional materials. Um, so we're going to do the deed of trust at the end. Take, take advantage of anything like that that might come up. And you all know buildings. You know what happens. As soon as somebody touches one thing, something else breaks. You know, I, I own a house built in 1938. I do it all the time. You know, so, uh, but, but that way we have a little bit of flexibility even on the back end as well. I'm good. Building permits have to be pulled for all of this stuff. Yeah, you, yeah you'd have to, at, that, at that point you'd have to work with your yeah you'd have to work with your contractor who've been to the window to pull okay. the permits that are required. <laughs> yeah, nothing changes in terms of the normal kind of things like building permits. Um, I got even asked by when we do it, when we did the first pre bid meeting, one of the guys says, "Do we have to meet OSHA standards?" I looked at him and said, "Of course you have to meet OSHA standards, grant money or not, you know." Um, all those things about doing things properly and when you work on a building, all those things definitely still apply. Yeah. Um, on the paint, is that the installed price of the paint or just the paint? Just the paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and that's the one that's the toughest because, you know, the paint's going to be four or $500. Exactly. But painters want to charge you, you know, a lot more. And some of the painter prices among the bids we got was right. way high, way, way high. And that's what I think... <laughs> Bump some people, um, but yeah, that's that's the one we again we can't we can't pay for the thing. Sorry about that. We have to walk a fine line here because um, so I don't know. A gentleman earlier brought up Davis Bacon, uh, so it's federal money, so that means prevailing wages. That's a statutory requirement, meaning if you go out to contract, you've got to pay the prevailing wage. And yes, it is typically an inflated price. It's just we can't control that. We're, you know, you got to go talk to your your HUD and Congress about changing that. Uh, the minimum, which has not changed in like 60 years, is $2,000. So anything on a federal project that exceeds $2,000 of a quoted price must um, uh, conform to prevailing wages. And you've got to do all the, the paperwork that Craig mentioned. If you're doing your work yourself, that's different. What you can't do is get materials only and then go solicit um, contractors and pay them a rate that is cheaper than a prevailing wage unless you're the business owner. So you can't contract, do an ad in the paper, solicit, have that person work for $1.98 doing your paint. That, that could get us in trouble. So you have to just be careful on how you do that. So, so that, that changes everything. Yeah, that we're we're back to square one then, aren't we? Yeah. The whole problem here was the price was inflated because of these. If you're a building owner, things. are you a building owner? Yes. yes. That's different. We all are. We, yeah. so, yeah, we all are. That's why we're here. Yeah. Okay. We're all owners. That's why we're here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Can, so, can we make sure we're all on the same page here? Yeah. This is important. If we, we clarify with our work that we have a total of $10,000 worth of material which are accepted and legitimate and, and we're good for it. Can we use anyone we choose to use for the labor, for the installation? Can we have our own friend do it? I'm not capable, but if I was, <coughs> I'd do it myself and so on and so forth. Uh, assuming probably that they're a class, uh, minimum class B or class A contractor. Or have we got to employ a contractor who is compliant with these federal regulations? I'm going to read you exactly what it says. Uh, on the paper here, 1A, it says that um, paint and any materials used in preparing a surface to receive the new paint with the labor provided by the owner or a painting contractor of the owner's choosing at the owner's expense. So that is alluding to, yes, we can do it ourselves, and yes, right. we can but has hire that, but, own but, but has that contractor mm -hmm. got to be compliant with right. the, is right. it Baker Davis? Whatever Davis, Davis Baker. Davis Baker. Or can that contractor be a guy that we as realtors often use when we're getting work done on houses and so on, who isn't compliant with that because he's just a local contractor? It was my understanding that any materials that you pay for, 
or any labor that you pay for, they have to be compliant. If you are not paying the labor and you're doing materials only to the owner, we can use whoever we want. Now that's what I was. Let me just read it. So, that that so, that so all federal labor standards <laughs> requirements apply for construction contracts over two thousand dollars using any CDBG funds, et cetera, et cetera. Building owners may choose to have a contractor of their own choosing perform the construction work. If the building owner is a contractor, the building owner may have his company perform the work. In either incidence, CDBG funds can be used for documented material costs only. The design professional must participate in the development, approval, and so on and so forth. Um, for building owners who opt to use their own time and labor to match, the grantee must utilize standard wage rates for job classification. The ECD will provide the wage information based on the federal wage rates. The amount claimed as match must be less than the cost of contractor installed improvements. But that's that's about if somebody wanted to count their own labor has matched. That has nothing to do with about. Yeah. You're, reading from your, you're reading from your manual, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so can we translate that for the group? Yeah, yeah can you translate yeah. clear? So can I just repeat the question? If we have agreed <coughs> that our 10,000 is uh, fair enough for materials and where it go, can we go out and use our own local contractor at his normal rates to install those materials? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. 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 What we you are just read not does not worry say about that. Yeah, we want to hear from you. <laughs> 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 I thought you just said yes. I heard yes. I said yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> State guy, what say you? But we need to have a conversation about because it just reminds me of another project. So, um, can we go away comfortable with that answer? I'm not getting positive vibes. We're going to do this. Down the road. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe it's not good well, enough, is what, what he read is what is on this paper. <laughs> how, did we, how did we handle it? Uh, you said you could choose your own contract. It doesn't say yeah. you can be anyone you wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. subcontracts. Yeah. You didn't say that. Because that's, that would be... That's what he said. That's that not what he meant. Whatever they did is fine. We can use it here. But if... <coughs> Could we get a copy of what you're reading? Yeah, it's um, it's on the it's on the DACD website, and we can we can print this out too. DACD website. I suppose my my point I'm perhaps forcibly making here is that those words don't say specifically, and they don't don't have to observe Davis Baker. They just don't. Mentioned Davis Baker. That doesn't mean to say there isn't a federal underlying regulation that says any contractor who is who is installing stuff where any materials have been paid for under the federal grant has to be compliant with Davis Baker. And we don't want to go into this and find down the line that they're going to turn around and say, ah, sorry, right, yeah, Spend all this can't money use money and then, yeah. yeah, but then they get your property. There's several pages out of the manual that I just gave to Doug that I had printed out when we were working on this adjustment. Um, and part of what the wording he was using is if, like if somebody wants to count as match their own hours, they can't say, um, I was an electrician and I'm going to put down $35 an hour for my time if they're not an electrician. Okay, it's to protect that side of things uh, more than it is the issue we're talking about. Is here. anyone here a an owner and a contractor, though, who would do their own work? Okay, so no disrespect, but we're not talking about your situation. We, the rest of us, are talking about employing a contractor. Right. Not doing the work ourselves. Well, I'm not going to pay my painter. And we want to, we want to know that we can employ local. a contractor who is not being forced to pay $40 an hour to a or something. As I interpret this, it is for match. So you're not inflating the cost of your, as a building owner or size contractor, you're not inflating the cost of your match. You're, if you're doing whatever, you're not saying, you know, my match is an inflated cost. So that would be considered inflating it for the purposes of a match. This is a little different, this is a unique situation in that it is 
materials only that the builder owner is doing uh, his or herself. Um, so if memory serves Craig in the former project, uh, we counted all that as, as uh, building owner match by the building owner's contractor. Right. Okay. Was it up to a certain, you were talking about $10,000 It's whatever. $10, it's, it's whatever the locality, it's your project, so you deem at your site advisory board, develop something called a program design. Program design is public information, it's so you can't choose favors. It's any one of you could say, I want to see, you know, I want to see the rules and regs. How are, how are uh, you know, how is Joe picked over my stuff and so on and so forth. It's a public document that outlines the facade improvement program. And part of that is a ceiling of the match. In your case, it's 20,000? Yeah. Maximum? Yeah. Yeah. Max. 20,000. So that's decided by you all. That's not, that's not DHCD. That's based on your overall budget, the number of participation agreements originally submitted. You do the math. You can do, you know, 15 facades at 20,000, you know, that's 300,000. I, I think the question, if yeah, I'm getting this answer. right, I think the question is, if this is a match per dollar per dollar match for materials only, and we're using our own contractor, does that contractor have to comply with? No, he just said no. Okay. No. Oh, are you good with that? He said no. Well, that was definitive. That was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> And if we give you a materials list, certainly you can look at it and decide for well, it's yourself. Not me. It's well, not no, me. well, whoever <laughs> is looking at it and saying, okay, um, so everything is 50 yards through, of drywall is this. And is, everything is vetted. Just to be real clear, I'm not, I'm not dicing and slicing your program. It's run by the volunteers in the facade advisory board. They select. Now, what you're supposed to do is everyone submits. You've already done that in round one. Is it eligible? Does it pass muster with? the three agencies that uh, Craig mentioned, if it does, and you're, you've got the eligible expenses, um, you know, they've got to be permanent, not, like like you said, it can't be temporary furniture, et cetera. You submit those, you get 50% um, up front, 50% upon completion. They do the final evaluation to verify, yes, you've used paint, yes, you've installed awning, yes, you've done windows, whatever it is. They sign off on it, then you release the, uh, the remainder of the funds, and you sign the deed of trust, and there it is. Okay. Does that help? Yep. Okay, let's do this. What we can't do is you can't. <laughs> but I, this is important. We we can't. The idea of materials only is, as he said, is an installed price. Where we run into a very gray area is when you buy a product. Then you have to advertise for a contractor to install that product. If, if you're using local labor that is not an installed price and not materials only, then you have to pay uh, prevailing wages. But we don't care because we're doing a dollar per dollar match for materials only. That's correct. Right. Okay. Right. He just backtracked again. I just. I swear. It did. Did. <laughs> I swear it did. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming tonight. Come by and see um, Chris and I in the morning. If you've got questions or what time are you open, Chris? We open at 8, but you can come at 9. Go back at 8.30. What are your duties? Can you come in the morning? Yeah. I have an obligation with my wife tomorrow night, and I'm going to get in real trouble if I'm not home in Richmond by tomorrow evening. Can I come at 9? Yeah. Let's do it to 1. So, so that, that's going to work for me. Tomorrow he's going to be here from 8.30 to 1. With you? Not with me. Do we just come and wait for our turn, or are you doing appointments? Um, if we actually, if a bunch of you are coming, I'll, I'll step out with you for a few minutes, and let's just kind of do some appointments real quick instead of having to come and wait around. Let's do that. We probably need to have a recess. Yes. So oh, okay. We're we'll taking a little recess. Yes, and we'll see me and we'll do a point. Oh, I'll sit down. Hey, guys. So, uh, Chris, you can come back up here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
before we move on to another agenda item, did anyone want to add anything that was said in the previous hour? Everyone pretty clear where we're heading? Yes. Okay. Um, I think we had a pretty good turnaround for about 40 minutes. It sounds like we got this thing back on track to some degree. Um, I want to talk about the uh, pavilion. Um, so I want to make sure I was clear. I've, I've gotten mixed information. The CBDG preferred option three, correct? Option three, if you put all the training on option two. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Option okay, three. so so option three came to $283,000. And we believe we were about $150,000 over budget. Um, the committee, many of you were at the meeting. We had a joint meeting with the town council. Um, I'll put Bill on the spot. Bill, did you have any thoughts on the... Uh, I'm being over budget. And we'll we weren't happy about it, <laughs> right. but uh, I think they're favorable. And kind of the flavor I got going around the table. So, so they're still committed to try to do it. Do That's the kind of the impression I had. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that. Okay. As is, uh, my question was based on Chris Hallway saying several times it would be cheaper if it were stick built. Would anybody accept a substitute design? that would be cheaper. Well, he didn't understand. I think it was explained. The way I interpreted it was there was uh, prefab work in there. Yes. So that's a little different animal. And I think yeah. he understood that afterwards. OK. OK. Well, and, and, yeah, not only that, I think, well, do y'all want to talk any more about the pavilion, or, or do you want to just wait? <laughs> One thing we should know, we're supposed to make decisions. Well, two things, and, and Bill, this, okay. and, and since Bill's willing to talk a little bit, and, and you know, where you feel like you can't talk out of turn, say so for sure. Um, you know, and, and if you look at it on paper, and this is where we probably left it a, a month ago, it looks like you're only 100000 over budget. But the 50000 or 52, it's right in there, on the town side of things was for getting the slab down, you know, and all of that. Right. So it winds up being a 150,000 gap. Um, one of the things, and Doug would like me, having heard me say this, one of the things I'd already said to Matt was, you know, if we, if we need to do a budget revision to make it happen, the way to really be convincing to DACD said, is to say, okay, we've got a $150,000 gap. Will you let us transfer over 75,000 if we put up 75,000 to come Well, we understood that. that too. So that was part of the discussion. So, um, you know, because I, the it, facade it, issue was, you know, what happens to the yes. budgeted funds at the end? Can it be moved to cover yes. <coughs> other costs? Yes. Okay. Um, and any kind of proposal to DACD that says we're going to share that cost, that overage, is much more favorably received than say we want to move the whole thing over, we're not going to spend any more of our money. Uh, the trick then becomes, and it's hard to talk about one, <coughs> not to talk about the other, is you know, the afternoon is kicking back up again, and yeah. we're trying to figure out a way maybe to put a few more extra dollars over towards the afternoon. Okay. So Tell me about the bathroom. The bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom is a separate project. It's right. the same as the pavilion. The pavilion. No, it was all bid as one. It's all bid as one. Yes. Okay. All right, plus the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, I think the intent, or not intent, our direction now is, uh, we'll work internally, uh, Chris and I, and. and Craig and Doug will work to try to uh, ensure what we can and cannot do, and BJ and I will try to determine where the money will come from. As soon as possible, Bill will bring it back to council at a work session and then get it on a regular meeting for an up or down vote. Is that yep. course of action? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Um, All right. Tell us about the afternoon. What's our relationship to that? Okay, afternoon. Yeah. What yeah. is our relationship to that? I mean, can we pop or not? Yeah. So we had a um, we had a meeting prior to uh, this meeting to discuss the afternoon. Uh, I think there's a possibility of the afternoon receiving. Uh, there's some confusion um, about um, whether or not the afternoon applied for the block grant. Can can someone help me with that? No, she did not. Who did she not? She did not. Jennifer did not. She was supposed to apply for a CDBG grant, and she did not. 
Well, the applicant or the owners of Two Weeks Main Street, and they they it's sent it in. They, yeah, they way. they sent it in. Uh, Melissa. I'm sorry, is that Well, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, and we had that discussion, and it was like, do we want to include it then or not, because of all the controversy at the time, so we sort of left the afternoon out. Now, I don't know whether you have a paper application or not. I don't okay. know. So I guess theoretically we could have them reapply. Sure. Okay. So two East Main will be the applicant this time? Well, it depends. I don't know. You know what's this? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? We have the expert down here. Say. What's, the, what's the status of the ownership of that building? <laughs> His face is getting red. Just <laughs> 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 listening. Yeah, no comment. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think we just have to wait for the next 30, 60 days anyways and see what happens with the afternoon. So I, I, I think we'd all like to talk more, but I don't think we know exactly yet the direction. Where that's and, going. And, and one piece that is helpful, because there was the consideration that they might be in the block grant for, you know, normal kind of facade with $20,000 for windows. Um, DHR has reviewed it. DHR has reviewed it and um, Jim Burton, I think mm -hmm. is his name, yeah, uh, made some changes to it and DHR found it acceptable. So if we want to do it, we don't have to run it back to DHR um, because it was previously approved by DHR. Okay. The design, because you know, they were well into the design process right. when we were first getting started in the grant mm -hmm. program itself. So um, we, we actually have that approved. Doug, would you Maybe you could highlight. Um, we received a letter from, I guess, the Marla Murray. Right yeah. HR. Um, and you were saying earlier how <clears throat> perhaps the letter got generated or how the program is being monitored and um, what can or cannot be done with the afternoon. Did you want to tell the group that? Maybe yeah, so really briefly. So the Department of Historic Research Resources is a consulting agency on block grants. Uh, the money flows from HUD to the DHCD. The DHCD then uh, issues the grant award to the locality, this case being the town. Uh, during the planning grant process, uh, the grant or the uh, consultant did an environmental review. That is submitted to DHR for concurrence. And that included the Afton Inn within the project scope. In other words, our, our project area is basically Main Street and we're going to make these improvements to include the, the property owners, the uh, pavilion, and so forth. At that time, the um, Afton Inn was not a direct recipient of the block grant funds, but it was in the project area. Therefore, DHR makes, um, is aware of the project, <coughs> and somewhere along the line, I don't know, you probably know more than me about this, but... Um, uh, the State Historic, State Historic Preservation Officer um, received um, or heard some noise about possible demo and that was a change in scope and so she directed a, a letter to, to Chris to respond to about the disposition of the property. Um, that's not saying anything other than there has to be a response to <coughs> the HR. Comment. I never heard anybody on this committee say anything about demolishing the afternoon. No. Period. But they picked it up. He was saying that they, they, they monitor news. They move, but there would be enough <coughs> material to mow. Some people were trying to protect the afternoon from somebody, but it wasn't from us. I, I don't. I don't know. Well, I just left it to sit there. Yeah. So, yeah. you write a one letter back, one yeah. or one f sentence letter back. The town is not trying to tear well, down. Well, well, actually, I was going to reply to it in that way that I have no requests that have been made, and and we have no, I have no idea why I was sent this in the first place. So, um, I mean, is that a good enough response? I mean, I was going to be like, yeah, craft, we're not going to do it. I'll craft a response. Okay. But, I'll, I'll, and I'll run it past you. Yeah. And when she uses town capital T, she means the town. And that's that was incorrect on her part. Well, yeah. Okay, late in 2019, our understanding was windows, okay? But we have never gotten any details about it. And that's all we know. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else for the afternoon? Um, I want to update you on Streetscape. Well, let me go in order here. Hang on. Um, we've talked Town Plaza. We've talked Facade, Streetscape. Uh, BJ, let's see. BJ, you were in a meeting, weren't you? Were you in a meeting at Streetscape? Yeah. Uh, oh, no. It was um, Robbie Boyer. So we met with EPR, who's been contracted to do the uh, Streetscape. Uh, they have they've done a very thorough job in preparing for their meeting. Um, they're going to uh, be putting together a memo very soon to start their meetings with various uh, government entities, various citizens, stakeholders. Um, we went through uh, probably a two-hour meeting with them, uh, went over the key points of the RFP, um, talked about a steering committee, various phases and tasks, etc. So um, uh, they're going to get started in time. Okay, so they have started the project. Yes. Okay. And the cost of the project. I want to say seventy, 70 thousand. Yeah, yeah. Seventy, 70, 70 thousand dollars. Yeah. And you have a contract back, right? Yeah. Uh, she, she issued. Uh, Alyssa has issued the notice proceeds, so we have the contract. Yeah. Back. Okay. Um, so that's that's going to get started. Um, This way, way finding, the wayfinding signage, uh, Joe was spearheading that with the county. He's not, he's out sick today. Um, it's my understanding, uh, we're still waiting on VDOT approval. Um, but T Karen did say that she's going to be checking with VDOT for a further update tomorrow. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll thank you. Um, so that is all I had on my list. Did anyone have anything that they wanted to talk about? And I have one other action item before we adjourn. Yes. Okay. Okay. Number one, we need a financial statement every month. I'm going to be working on this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to create a tracking sheet that just shows what we've spent and not spent as okay. soon as I can get it together. And timetable. And an agenda. Okay. We can work on yes, that. Timeline we can work on that. Ideal. Okay. And the other thing is we need to know what jobs are or can be done that are in the matching part of the town. We don't know who does what. I sure understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you, I don't know, let's say you're the parking study, they participated in that, town staff did. Right. right. So we should have known that town staff was doing that parking study. We did know that, okay? Yeah. That's the only reason I can use yeah. this example. Right. What other jobs can they be doing now, okay? It's not a drawdown on the money, but at least it shows activity. Well, no. And I, th I think your point is well taken. We need to show that we are. Being kind of matches, is that what you're yeah. referring to? Yeah. Ed, did you have a question? Well, yeah. just, I was just going to say what BJ did, that that's just match money. So right. that doesn't draw any money down. I know, I understand that, but okay. it shows the activity, okay, and it's, things are getting done. And I think, Matt, yeah, but the general question was, what are we doing? But the number one measure is the drawdown. I understand that. So they want to see us spend that money. But there's, there's other okay. things like uh, what Joe's working on for the murals. Yes. We can get that activity going. That's right. Find out how to get that going. That's a, that's a positive so that's, note for the count. Exactly. We're not spend a lot of money. But that can be a sidetrack on an agenda item to say how do we how right. do we move that forward. And so what is the you know what is the cost or the expense of that particular okay. match like the signage? What are you doing? Okay, so that we know that we're tracking both match and expense yeah so let me let me maybe take a step back and, and so the last 30 days uh, I've been solely focused on materials only right because in the pavilion right. um, and that's and, and you're exactly right uh, things like uh, agendas and minutes and timetables uh, we need to get back on track and get back into the, the battle rhythm of the, the committee um, I was very pleased that we were able to get as much done as we have done in 30, 40 days. Uh, meeting with the board, uh, town council, so um, which leads into my next item. Uh, we tried to, at the last meeting, we had hoped to um, have Joe step up to be chair. He wasn't able to do that. So um, I would like to uh, still elect someone's chair of the committee tonight. Um, and 
I'd entertain volunteers like Herb if he was willing to do it. Second. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, he's, we've had a private conversation yeah. beforehand. So um, I'd entertain a motion to elect Herb. I'll second that. Okay. I'll, I'll make the motion. motion. Okay. okay. Second. All right. Especially if he's willing to do it. Willing to yeah. take it on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. Herb, thank you for stepping up. Um, I want you to know that the town staff fully committed to support um, administratively. Any, I know that you're a volunteer, and this is a big responsibility. Um, I mean, we're still going to be heavily involved. Huh? You're willing to use any town offices and you know, administrators, whatever you need. Um, might be good to... Um, at your convenience, we'll have a uh, maybe get a, a meeting together internally mm -hmm. so that we can debrief, kind of get you turn over a lot of files, or have access to files, show you where they are in the building, um, some of Jeremy's old files and minutes that he has, and then um, and then we can start moving forward as far as I think things are going to happen very quickly with these with this group. Um, at least that's my goal. I think the first phase people are ready to start spending money. They sounded positive. Yeah. 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 I mean, do we know that was like majority of the owners in downtown, or is that probably about? I think there's about still half a lot of them more out there. Still, yeah, there's still more out there. There's at least four here that were owners that were in phase one. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know there's a couple. I know there's new people out there that want to be part of the program. So the question I had, I wanted to ask you. Doug is um, the I forget the name of the group, not the facade advisory, but someone set the twenty thousand dollar limit or cap. That's actually uh, done in the program design. Program design, right? Right. Generally by the facade advisory board of the Can the cap be increased? Yeah. And administratively, the, when can that be done, and what are the mechanics for it to be done? Generally, it's done by the amount of the budget. So y'all have, was it 350? 350. All right, 350, and that's driven by the amount of participation agreements. Like the example I made, you know, 20 owners do the math. Um, I think you need to do a recounting of, of the owners participate. and find out how much money you have left mm -hmm. from those that have already committed, and that'll... that'll uh, so if we get to, if we get, I, the reason I asked was right now we've had only one facade improvement. Um, I think 10 grand or something modest. Okay, so um, I, I heard the word fair. We want to be fair. I think you use that term. If we find, uh, if we get down to May or June and uh, we still don't have the numbers to exceed or, or to reach the 350 limit, are we allowed to amend mm -hmm. at that time and increase it to 40,000 or 30,000? Yeah, I think you just have to justify the amount. It okay. can't be arbitrary. You have to say that we held, you know, we engaged with the property owners in round one, you had 15, and now you have 10. So you had five fall out of the remaining, I think you're under contract for 20 yeah. facades. So, um, if you have 10 viable facades and you are losing 10, then that'll help um, validate the, the cost okay. request for an amendment for the application. So at that time, if, if we amend it, and I'm just going easy numbers. Right now we're 20, we amend it to 40. Are the people who already applied and used the 20, are they able to go back and get the other 20? Okay, it has to be new people, okay. Well, now, what are we going to do with phase two? Because they haven't been, they're sort of sitting there waiting to be approved. Most of them, um, well, several of them made appointments with me in the morning. And so they're the ones that are making yeah. appointments with you? Okay, all right, okay. And then, so once they go through, you're going to put something together, we can get it through the facade group right. and do that process. But you need your new appointments for the facade board. I have that. Yeah. So what about the phase two folks who weren't here? Well, we'll, have, we'll need to reach out to them for sure. Some of them weren't here. Yeah, yeah no, I'm sorry, sorry, I got a with three of them just right away tonight, right afterwards. So. For phase two. Phase two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. three How many do we have in phase two? So the, uh, I don't remember. 
facade board, I have uh, Angela Toller, Bill Seelock, Ed Daly, Herb, is there a Mel? No, it's Herb Mel right Oh, no, I'm sorry. I <laughs> two words, two words. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, then I was on the board. Or actually, I'm not on it, but Joe was. So I've got, we got right. three new appointments that we have to. Yeah, three staff members. Three staff members. members. Have to be redone. Pretty much sure. We never yeah, tried to make a comment because they have to charge the salary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Ye
the little pond is on the coming into town on the left. Yeah. We talked about one time making that the true gateway with a bigger sign and mm -hmm. whatever. But that's all I remember. Okay. By gateway, because I know Joe was in on that conversation. I think I remember. Well, they kind of made it sound like that was it was the funding. It was called Gateway, but it had doing with the the gateway of the main street. But it kind of the way it was saying. Well, we could it do kind of, we search Jim's emails and yeah. Melissa's okay. maybe find out. Okay. One thing backing up, and I think it's to Linda's point. The the numbers as far as the money that we're expending is is critical, but. We need to make sure that we're aware of what the in kind is as we're going forward. Yeah, we have a spreadsheet. So, <coughs> I've started uh, working on that. Yeah, I think that we do. Yeah. We, we've just never been privy to that. Okay. And that's what you know. We're going to work on that. Right. I, I gave it up. Yeah, we have it. I'm, I'm going to work on it. What I've typically done in the past is, um, is, is, is basically the budget and what's been expended on the budget by drawdown. Right. Or by the remittance with DHCD. Um, but the force account work is part of what you're referring to is the hours that other people put in there. I'd given the town an example of what one looks like sometime back. And I've been, I've began to collect that information. Um, I don't know where it exactly went or but we've got some work to do on that as it started. And we can enter those hours and the, the, the value of those hours into the spreadsheet I would do when, when we have some numbers. And, and a lot and usually in these projects, we don't have, try to enter them every month. It just gets a little crazy. But, you know, once you get to a good figure, we'll put it in there. And it'll, I, I like even showing them on the remittance request we sent to DACD that here's another, some more, you know, of that leverage money the town is spending in the process. Did you all see the revised budget? Yes. Was that, yeah. so that, was, that brief? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I know I sent it to Linda because she asked for it, so I just want to make sure that... Everyone else did. Yeah, because so much of that was the, the uh, Chrysler path. <laughs> so the application, let me turn with the date. Search for it. Rick Novak said something about July. Two, three years ago. And he said something about September. Well, that was the program end. September 25th. That was the yes, that was the beginning. beginning. So it wasn't it wasn't by July to July. Yeah. 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 September 25th. No, the the the, the date the July 15th is when so they first started when they first submitted their initial application way back. Mm -hmm. That is no, no, we Seventeen. We were allowed to go back two years for people to collect. No, no, no. I wasn't informed of the Yeah, longer, yeah. Yeah. Because that was part that was of when. the... Yeah, it was yeah. CAG. Because yeah, right. we have okay. so two separate the first... Two separate ones. Yeah. Planning grant. The first planning yeah. grant. The first planning yeah. grant. Yeah. The 35,000. Yeah. yeah. And then we I didn't agree. make... We didn't... Our, our application wasn't approved, but then the governor had extra funds. And, and then so we got and we've And we've left... You, and this was even before I got here, left that date, and then since right. I've been involved, right. we've left that date as that original date rather than moving it forward. Just because right. it would be very unfair to people to have so many conversations start with us moving no. date yeah. for their match, be of able to count back their match. Yeah. We've just kept it set. Okay. And I understand July 1st was the date, okay? Yeah, it's July 1st, 2015. Okay. Okay. And our project is September 25th. Yep, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. All right. So is there anything else you need from us? Did you get a... No, I, I think you're, it's, it's, uh, to your credit, it seems like you've uh, rebounded nicely, you've rallied the troops, and you've uh, you beat the street to get some more owners involved. <clears throat> I think there's some things to do. Primarily what I need will be a revised timetable, and then as you work through your, you know, your potential budget, Request revision. We need to validate what you want to do and how many <coughs> of the original 20 facades are still valid. If you're doing 20, 10, whatever. So we, need to, we need to revise. <coughs> we need to revise the deliverables. So right now, uh, I'll just read these. So this is per the contract. Facade improvements to at least 21 commercial facades. Design and construction of a town plaza. Design and construction of wayfinding signage. Develop and implement downtown district branding and marketing plan to include digital media, visitor center collateral. Plan and facilitate streetscape improvements. That's a match. 
Other improvements to include parking, alley, downtown mural, enhancements, et cetera. That's a match. And the last one is design and completion of the Chrysler Road Trail, also a match. Well, we checked a couple things off. Yeah. 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 Um, Craig, I know a few months ago, and maybe we can find it if you got it, where we had the deliverable and the timeline of dates. Mm -hmm. Way back when, I wanted yeah. to start yeah. seeing. We're going to have to do it. We're going to do that every meeting. I'll make sure it's ready for the next meeting now that we've yeah. kind of figured out where we're going. Because yeah, I want to be able to go through and yeah. go through yeah. new dates. Everyone's aware of what needs to be done so that we can stay on track. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, budget to it. Yeah. Yes. So you have her contact information? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for...